みなさん、こんばんは。私はマスティブ日本です。今日一緒に新しい日本酒を飲みましょう。Hello everyone, this is Matthew in Nihon coming to you with yet another Nihon s h u review. And today we are reviewing a very large and interesting Nihon s h u from Kiku Masamune, which was founded in 1659 during the Edo period. Yes, indeed, it seems many sakaguras were founded. In the Edo period. This particular sakagura was built in Mikage Kobe and has become noted for its contribution to the Japanese export industry.、Uh, you can find its Nihon shoes in England and in America, amongst other places. Now, Kiku Masamune stands out because it uses the traditional Kimoto method of Nihon shoe brewing. This method involves an ancient process of starter yeast creation called moto or shubo. There are only a little over 1,000 sakaguras in Japan that still use this method, in a big part because it takes four weeks from beginning to end, which is twice as long as more modern methods of Nihon shu brewing. And Because of the nature of the process, it's very difficult to ensure a consistent quality. Now, today's Nihon Shu is called Shibori Tate. This is an award winning Honjozo. Now, if you remember, Honjozo is a type of Tokute Meisho Shu, or special designation Nihon Shu, that has seen a small amount of fermented alcohol. Added to it at the end of the fermentation process. Now, this usually results in a Nihon Shu that is a little lighter and drier than other Nihon Shus like Jun Mai Shu. But this particular Nihon Shu, one, and I believe you can see it a little bit there, eee! this particular Nihon Shu won the IWC or International Wine Challenge. Great Value Champion Sake Award in 2019. It is purported to be smooth, soft, and creamy with fruity qualities. However, as sweet as that sounds, this does have a Nihon Shu Do or secret,、uh, Sake Meter value of positive three. It is a dry Nihon Shu. And it has fermented to about 14 15%, obviously, with the fermented alcohol added in. So let's take a look at today's pairing. Now, today we are pairing the Shibori Tate with a simple combination of tempura and o sushi. Now let's begin my favorite part. This is an interesting design. I've known for a while that Nihon Shu can come in cartons. It's not something you're used to seeing in America. But I suppose it makes sense. It can still maintain freshness and quality. Shibori tate. I am excited. Alright, let's take a look. Hmm. 
it does have a natural fruity kind of a smell with a hint of mushroom the usual kind of herbal notes Ooh, that is nice the purported creaminess is definitely there it is very dry There does seem to be a hint of melon. A lot of the judges who tasted this before described a number of fruity notes to it, but I'm not picking up on that much. There's definitely the melon, but... There's a nice mushroomy quality to it. Nothing else, I mean... Nothing else that I can describe at the moment. Hmm. But it is very nice, very smooth. It doesn't have that clean quality that uh, you usually find in Ginjo or uh, by Ginjo, but it has a nice layering to it that makes it enjoyable to drink. So let's give it a try with the sushi first. I think I'm gonna uh, try cleaner flavors. Ooh, that definitely brought out the fruitiness a little bit more. The melon is a lot more clear. Um, there almost was a hint of kiwi. That, that was something the judge had uh, described, but I didn't pick it up when I drank it straight. But the sushi, it, it brought it out a little bit. The mushroom equalities are uh, gone after eating the sushi. That is nice. I'm not picking up as much of the story qualities when I drink it in a pair. But Mm. Ooh. When I matched it up with the tuna, it gave me a very clear apple note. Ooh. 
That was nice. See, even with sushi, the different types of fish and the different toppings can change the flavor with every bite. I'm telling you, there is no other alcohol in the world that has anywhere near the complexity and interactivity that Nihonshu does. I, I, I have spoken to a few people who do not like Nihonshu. They, they insist that they've tried it once and it just wasn't their speed. And to those people, I will tell you now, just because you've tried one Nihonshu does not mean that you know Nihonshu. You truly cannot pass judgment on the genre of Nihonshu based on one bad drink. There are Nihon shoes that don't taste very good. They're difficult to down. The alcohol is overpowering and it just doesn't have a good flavor. But for every one of those, there is a sweet Nihon shoe that's light, fruity, enjoyable to drink. There's a dry herbal Nihon shoe that when paired with barbecue or sushi, can, in its own way, give you a journey while you eat. It's beyond words. So even if you've had one Nihonshu that you didn't like, please take the time to try some of the other Nihonshus, especially if they're ones that you see on my channel, because I will not recommend any Nihonshu that I do not believe is good. And I believe we should go ahead and try the tempura. Mm. The Dempura immediately brings out the apple qualities and enhances the creamy quality of the Nihonshu. I usually prefer to save fried foods for later because of the oil and the breading, and they tend to be sometimes on the sweeter side or usually on the sweeter side, and that can overpower the taste of anything that comes afterwards. It's always a good rule of thumb. If you're drinking Nihonshu, start with the dry and then move to the sweet. And the same thing applies to food. Start with the dry, move to the sweet. Because once you've had the sweet, it contaminates the taste of everything else. That was interesting. That was a vegetable tempura. I'm gonna go for one of the more fishy. Mm. With the fish, or the meat-based tempura, there was a hint of the apple. It shifted a little bit back into the melon. But it really enhanced the fruity qualities of the dryer nihonshu. And those fruity qualities are not sweet. Well, when you drink the nihonshu straight, they're not sweet. But when you pair them with the food, it brings out a little bit of that sweetness. That is a very good pairing, and I am very happy with it. I am going to enjoy drinking this. I'm going to have to buy this more often. But with that out of the way, I believe that brings us to the end of this review. So, 
I would like to take this time to thank or to say thanks to the Nihonshu Nation and my viewers. And I also want to give a special thanks and shout out to Nihonshu TV, my new friend. He's been very supportive and seems to enjoy working with me on the idea of trying to encourage interest in Nihonshu. I also want to give a very special shout out to Keizo-san and Hidemitsu-san for introducing this Nihonshu to me. They actually recommended it as part of the voting process that I do from time to time, but the Mio and other Nihonshus ended up being the champions, but I, I was still intrigued, so I decided to give it a try, and I am so glad I did. This is going to be a staple in my house from now on. But with that aside, everybody, please remember, always be willing to go beyond the horizon and always be willing to try new things. And you know what? If it's something that you've tried before and it wasn't to your taste, maybe try it again. Sometimes we change, the situation changes, or sometimes maybe you approached it from an odd angle. It's always worth reconsidering. Until next time, everyone, keep safe. Things are getting better, and as long as we keep calm and try to enjoy the small things in life, we'll be okay. Take care, everyone.